Welcome back to the show. The Nepean Wall of Fame induction ceremony coming up, and there are 12 inductees this year, um, all of them incredibly and talented people that have done just amazing things in the sports world. But I've got two of those 12 joining me here on the show today. First up is Lisa Weagle, of course, curler and uh, inductee. Welcome. Great Thank to have you, you here. Nice Congratulations. Be here. And Fernando Henderson, who is a coach with the Nepean Ottawa Diving Club and inductee. Welcome, Fernando. Yeah, Great to you. have you here as well. Fernando, I'll start with you. Uh, you have uh, an interesting history on, on getting into, into diving. You came what, to Canada at the age of 17, am I right? Uh, well, I started diving when I was uh, nine years old. Okay. Um, and then um, dove for one year. And my first competition outside the, uh, the country was at the World Championships in Texas. But I actually traveled from the age of about 11, 12 to Canada all the time. Okay, yeah, okay. So then, uh, Why yeah. diving? What was uh, your inspiration to get into When I started, sport? I knew nothing about the sport of diving. All I knew was baseball. Okay. I didn't even know where the pool was, but I was asked by a coach uh, if I was interested. So I told him, yeah, I'll go to the, um, they call this, uh, the Olympic Center in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. And uh, when I got there, um, they asked me to dive, and I did. I didn't know how to swim. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> so then after that, then for two weeks, they sent me to the uh, swimming pool to just to learn how to swim. So right. then that's kind of where how everything started. But for two weeks, I did dry land. And, uh, and then from that day on that I started diving, I never looked back. But before that, all I did was play baseball with all of my friends. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. I mean, in Dominican, that's, that's the sport most, most children turn to. Uh, over to you, Lisa. When, when did curling, when did you start curling? I started curling when I was eight years old. Eight years old. At the Granite Curling Club on yeah. Scott Street. I yeah. yeah, I just passed it, as yeah. a matter of fact. My parents signed me up, and it was just, I fell in love. Was it because feeling. they were curlers themselves? They actually joined the year before I did. They joined the Mixed League, and they put me in Little Rocks when I was eight. Okay. So it was just Saturday mornings going out and sliding around and making friends and having hot chocolate and Timbits, and <laughs> yeah, I loved it. <laughs> when did it become competitive for you? I joined a competitive team when I was about 14 years old okay. and then kind of kept pursuing that and then I joined Team Homan when I was 25 and so I've played at the national level for the past 12, 13 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. What, what's, uh, that's probably a tough question. You've had so many highlights, but you know, if you look back in your career so far, what, what's, what's the, the greatest highlight for you? There's been quite a few. Yeah. I've been very, very fortunate. I would say a highlight was winning the Olympic trials here in Ottawa mm. at Canadian Tire Center. Um, you know, as a, an athlete, you don't get to play in your home city very often, and to have this massive event and all my family and friends there and people who'd been part of my curling journey to be in the building the moment I became an Olympian. Like, it gives me chills thinking about it nice. right now. Actually, uh, yeah, that it. was the most I special. Uh, I told you I've, I've fallen in love with the sport. Yeah. My wife would say that I've become obsessed. I'm sorry, honey. Uh, <laughs> Fernando, what about yourself? Tell me a little bit about, you know, your, your career and what would you say are some of the highlights or the highlight of your career? Uh, right at the beginning, um, I participated at the Central American Games. Uh, and uh, the first year that I competed, uh, I was 10 years old right away. I just started diving. And I was uh, sixth place. But then two years later, I kept working on it. And then I was able to go, went to gold medal um, for the Dominican team. Uh, and it was really sweet to be able to do that um, and to hear the national anthem. But um, many times here, diving in Canada too, because I dove here also, uh, just being able to medal at an international meet was really sweet. Yeah. Um, going to the Olympic, I was the second youngest diver. I was only just 17. And just being there with uh, thousands of people, that was very exciting uh, for me. I can imagine. Uh, so I have gone through so many meets, but I know that at the World Championships, when I was um, uh, 14, I was able to finish third place that it was for me really really sweet um, you're being inducted under the coaching category yes. when did coaching come into your life um, after I finished my diving career um, I did for 18 years I uh, went to school and then uh, graduated and went to work in Miami Florida and then from there I heard that the position for the assistant coach was opening here in Ottawa, so I decided to take a chance, come here, and then just started working with the younger kids. And slowly but surely, I love diving. Um, I love helping young children, young kids, young mind to develop them for not only the sport of diving and the mechanic, but 
for more than that for their future. So, um, so uh, I had many athletes have done very well. Um, one of the athletes right now is in Kate Miller. She's in Santiago, Chile right now for okay. the Panam Games. So, uh, but many other ones like Henry McKay, Jamie B. Yeah. there have been so many athletes that we Henry have. Henry McKay is being inducted as well, right, yes, into, yes. into the Wall of yes. Fame. Uh, you've gotten, speaking of coaching, you're, you've now gotten into coaching. Tell me about uh, the decision around that, Lisa. Yeah, I've been so fortunate. Had great coaches, great teammates, learned a lot in the sport and wanted to give back. So started an academy uh, nice. and a youth program and getting into all different kinds of coaching and just trying to pass on what I've learned to the next generation and in inspire youth to, to follow their dreams too. Well, speaking of youth, you've also been, uh, you, you've taken on the role of chef de mission for the Youth Winter Olympics. Tell me about that. I mean, that's, well, yeah, what a great honor. What an honor, yeah, to be able to be part of Team Canada and um, kind of on that bigger stage, not just for curling, but for all sports and to lead the team in Gangwon, which is, I had my first Olympics in South yeah. Korea, so it's very full circle and very exciting to go to the games in January. Fernando, what does it mean to you to be recognized like, like this? Um, it means so much to me because um, I, we, because uh, not only myself, but the volunteers that we have, and we have throughout the years, and the parents and the kids, uh, they all are working very hard too. It's kind of a, not just a recognition of yourself, right? It's a recognition of everybody that, that's come before you and yes. everyone that supported you. I got 30 seconds, I, same question for you, Lisa. What, is it, what does it mean to you? Yeah, it's a huge honor and all the people that have been part of it. And it's great meeting Fernando and other inductees too. And we're all from different sports, but the power of sport has really meant a lot to us. Yeah. So it's gonna be great to celebrate that. Well, now. congratulations to both of you and of course to all 12 inductees. Uh, just a reminder, Nepean Sports Wall of Fame induction ceremony that's happening at the Nepean Sportsplex on October 26. You can find out all the information at nepeansportswalloffame.org. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more right after this.